from booktube it's andrea here and today i'm going to share with you all the books i have obtained in march yeah this is about 16 of them again some of these are books that i purchased myself some were full price some were like 50p in the charity shops some have been sent to me by publishers and there's even one that i won in a goodreads giveaway yay because we love those so we'll start with the one I won uh, in a Goodreads giveaway and that was Devour by L.A. Larkin and Olivia Wolf thriller and an ancient unstoppable unleashed. Ooh. So there's the cover and basically says their greatest fear was contaminating an ancient Antarctic lake, lake buried beneath the ice for millions of years. Little did they know that the catastrophe they were about to unleash. Welcome to the high octane world of Olivia Wolfe. As an investigative journalist, Wolfe lives her life in constant peril. Haunted by numerous enemies who are seldom what they first seem, she must unravel a complex web of lies to uncover an even more terrifying truth. From the poppy palaces of Afghanistan and Antarctica, forbidding windswept ice sheets to a top silicon I can't say it, top secret military base in the Nevada desert, Wolf's journey ultimately leads her to a man who would obliterate civilization and she must make an impossible choice, save one life or prevent the death of millions. So yeah, that one, that one sounds quite good and like I said, I won this on a Goodreads giveaway so I'm looking forward to getting into that one. I've actually won, won three books on Go Goodreads and I haven't actually read any of them yet so I'm really must. So the next four have been sent to me by publishers. And so the first one came from the Book Guild. And that is called Caught in the Act, a collection of short stories by David M. V. Spiller. I quite like the cover. It looks like snapshots from short stories. So that's very clever. So Caught in the Act is a varied and compelling collection of stories that convey the richness of life, some of which have autobiographical content. Murder in the Vicarage is inspired by real events and is based on the brutal murder of a local priest who is known to the author. While the rest of the collection is fictitious, it often holds elements of reality. On Retreat describes a teenage boy's anxiety about the contradictory nature of sleepwalking, while Sailing humorously explores a couple in the first flushes of romance who perhaps don't share the same interests. Varied in tone and content, every reader will find something to enjoy in this entertaining anthology. So this one I actually requested. They sent me a pub sheet and I requested it. The next one is one that's been sent to me uh, again by the Book Guild, but this one was unsolicited and this is called A Life Lived by Liz Parker. And this is a memoir, and it's a very short memoir, but it does sound quite interesting. So, um, stories of Liz's flamboyant lifestyle during her time in the theatre and films, which of course is going to be interesting to me, because I trained as an actor, I went to drama school, I love movies, I'm a member of my local theatre, uh, where she met famous stars and married a talented actor, are contrasted sharply by life of a struggle and hardship as a single parent. After a serious, successful and orthodox career at cancer... Shall I start that bit again? After a successful and orthodox cancer treatment, Liz made the courageous decision to leave England at the age of 57. She bought a rundown taverna and yacht club on a tiny island in Greece where her middle daughter helped her to run the idiosyncratic outpost. Tragedy then stuck once more on the idyllic island, leaving Liz to question everything. So it does really sound like my kind of thing because she was an actor. So I'm really looking forward to that one. Now the other two have been sent to me by Head of Zeus Publishing because I am taking part in two of their blog tours this month in April and the first one is The Summer House Party by Cara Fraser and so basically I've got the pub, pub sheet here so I will have a look at that. Oops, don't fall away. In, a glorious, in the gloriously hot summer of 1936, a group of people meet at a country house party. Within three years, the country will engulf in war. But for now, time stands still as they sip champagne on the lawn, engaging in casual, casual flirtations and carefree conversations. Then a shocking death puts an end to their revelry, changing everything in an instant. For all of them, that summer house party will be a turning point. The mistakes made during that fateful weekend will change their lives forever. And it says, Carol Fraser is the author of the best-selling Caper Court novels based on her own experiences as a, a lawyer. And she is daughter of the best-selling Flashman author, George MacDonald Fraser. There you go. So that one sounds very interesting. 
And the second one I've been sent by Head of Zeus as part of one of their the one of their blog tours is called Les uh, is the Dog Walker by Leslie Thompson, who writes the um, apparently very successful Detective Daughters series. I haven't heard of it before, but if I like this one, I'm going to go and chat down the previous four stories in the series. So this is, and I, when I, they sent me the pub sheet by email and I, I read it and I thought, oh my God, that sounds so good. January 1987. In the depths of winter, only joggers and walkers brave the Thames towpath after dark until a young woman, Helen Honeyset, settled for a run from her riverside cottage and never came home. Her body was never found. 29 years later, Helen's husband is still searching for answers. He's asked Stella, the detective's daughter, and Jack, a tube driver, to find out what happened all those years ago. But the five households on that desolate stretch of towpath refuse to give up their secrets. And as winter tightens its grip once more, Stella and Jack find themselves hunting for a killer whose trail has long gone cold. See, do you know what? That just sounds absolutely brilliant. It's my kind of book. I know I'm going to devour that in maybe one or two sittings. It's not going to take long. So the next one I actually bought has had mixed reviews. It was highly anticipated, but since it's been released, it's got mixed reviews. I want to find out for myself. And that is Stephanie Garber's Caraval. Obviously, I've got the British cover because <laughs> I really like it and I live in Britain. Um, and I do like the black and white sort of almost like Harlequin thing. Now, in a, we do have very different covers in the UK. There's a rose, there's a tent, there's a dress. I've got the top hat which is okay, I'm not really bothered because let's be honest, the dust jacket's going to be on most of the time. And I really, really like it. I think the book is beautifully done. I haven't read it yet. It does, as you go through it, I did see something there, there's a, a map of Caraval, which is, you know, the town and everything. And the, I just think that's brilliant. I, and there's the, I love the way that it's the letters that they wrote to the Caraval master or whoever he is to try and get a ticket. So yeah, I am looking forward to reading that, but I don't know when I'm going to get to it. I then picked up a book in Tesco, which is called The Book of Mirrors. The Book of Mirrors? Yeah. And they've actually got this sort of like bit thing stuck on it, so you can't read who it's by, so I'm going to have to open the book. And it's E.I. Chiravici. It's just your plain black cover, but hey, it's quite classy looking. And the tagline is, one man's truth is another man's lie. And I will read you the, uh, oh, if, if there is one. Okay. Don't trust everything you read. Princeton, 1987. That's the second book in this haul, this set in 1987. Hmm, do we detect a note of 80s-ism here? Renowned psychologist Professor Joseph Weider is, Weider, Weider is brutally murdered. New York, 25 years later, literary agent Peter Katz receives a manuscript. Or is it a confession? Today, unearth the secrets of the Book of Mirrors and discover why memories are the most dangerous weapons of all. And look at this cover. It's like a shattered mirror and it's red writing. Oh, it's gorgeous. Do we ever judge a book by its cover? Of course we do. We're booktubers. Next book I bought um, is one I have had recommended to me by a friend of mine at work named Julie. She loves this book, she thinks it's hysterical. She read it on Kindle. I prefer to have physical copies, as you can see. And that is The Lightning Struck Heart by TJ Clune. And so if you haven't read this, basically it says, once upon a time in an alleyway in the slums of the city of Lockers, of locks, a, youth, a young and somewhat lonely boy named Sam Haversford turns a group of teenage douchebags into stone completely by accident. I just love the language. Of course, this catches the attention of a higher power and Sam's pulled from the only world he knows to become an apprentice to the King's wizard, Morgan of Shadows. When Sam's 14, he enters the dark woods and returns with Gary, the hornless gay unicorn and a half giant named Tiggy, earning the moniker Sam of the Wilds. You know, you had me on hornless gay unicorn. At 15, Sam learns what love truly is when a new knight arrives at the castle. Knight Ryan Foxheart, the dreamiest dream to have ever been dreamed. Naturally, it all goes to hell when Ryan dates the reprehensible Prince Justin. Sam can't control his magic, a sexually aggressive dragon kidnaps the prince, and the king sends him on an epic quest to save Ryan's boyfriend. All while Sam falls more in love 
with someone he can never have or so he thinks. So this is obviously um, a LGBTQ fantasy novel. <laughs> what more could you want? You've got dragons, you've got gay unicorns, you've got giants, you've got magic and it's fantastic and apparently it's extremely funny. So that's why I finally picked it up, Julie! Yay, look! <laughs> She's been on at me to get that for like over a year, so yay! The next book is one of the authors I am um, I love so it is an auto buy for me it's the new one from Der Ger Terry Goodkind and that is Death Mistress Sister of Darkness the Nikki Chronicles book one so Nikki is a character from the Sword of Truth series which I do have every single book of but not in hardback and then he did do a few more after that I haven't got but I will get at some point um so this one and this again is a head of Zeus publication and I didn't know that, but I should have because it's got the lovely Head of Zeus matte covers and the lovely little bookmark that Head of Zeus put in them. It's, especially if they're over a certain length, they have these bookmarks. So this one um, says, Nikki has a past. Once she was a sister of the light and once a sister of the dark. Once she was a tyrant's most feared lieutenant and once a saviour's most loyal ally. Once she swore to destroy a man and then she fell in love with him. But now the world has been forged anew. Tyranny has been vanquished, the breach between the living and the dead healed, the stars themselves realigned by a formidable act of magic. The man she once swore to destroy is now Lord Raal, ruler of a vast, vast realm encompassing lands and people unknown, and Nicky is his emissary. Charged with bringing the word of his rule to a world shattered by terror and war. Her mission will take her into uncharted territories where she'll face her greatest test yet. She has helped save the world before, but this is the first time she'll have to do it on her own. So Nikki is one of those characters that we didn't learn enough of in The Sword of Truth. There were a few others, um, but... It's great she's got her own series. I'm so happy they're being published by Head of Zeus because they are all going to have this classic book look, I think. Um, they also published the, the First Confessor, which I still haven't read. It's in the TBR jar, but there you go. So yay for Terry Goodkind, one of my favourite authors. Uh, then we got four books, I think, that I bought very cheaply in uh, second hand, like for 50p from my branch Tesco on the charity shelf, because I always have a look. First one is Bones Off Forever by Kathy Rikes. I love these series of books. Um, so this one says, the, her fight for the truth will be the fight for her life. A rundown apartment near Montreal, inside a tiny bod body is hidden. Mummified, defenseless, a fatal shooting in yellow knife, a windswept desolate place where secrets are buried deep, a danger is ever present. Forensic anthropologist Temp Brennan puts her life on the line in her toughest case yet. So I'm just going to leave it with that. I'm not actually going to read the longer blurb on the inside because, yeah, that would spoil it. Then I bought a comedy book. So this is this came out, gosh, a good few years ago, 2010. And this is Mrs. Fry's Diary by Mrs. Stephen Fry. So obviously, look, there's Mrs. Stephen Fry. So, um, with a forward by Stephen Fry. Um... Uh, basically it says Stephen Fry's secret wife speaks out at last Stephen Fry actor writer raconteur and wit cerebral and sophisticated a true renaissance man or is he finally his secret double life the womanizing the window cleaning the kebabs the karaoke is exclusively revealed by Edna his devoted wife and mother of his five six or possibly seven children these diaries take us through a year in the life of an unwitting celebrity wife and are rumored to include scandalous nocturnal shenanigans advice on childcare and 101 things to do with a tin of spam <laughs> I love Stephen Fry he's amazing I've loved him for years he, you know back in the day when it was a bit of Fry and Laurie and then they did Jeeves and Worcester I've always loved Stephen Fry so I just thought I've got to read that it'll be so funny I also picked up Alexander McCall Smith's The Saturday Big Tent Wedding Party, which is the latest from the, no, it's not really, but it's from it's one of the number one det ladies detective agency. Isn't this cover gorgeous? And this came out, I think, 2010, 2011. So, but considering it came out in 2011, it's in remarkably good condition. So somebody's looked after this book for a very long time. So uh, this one says, as the countdown to Mama Kutsky's wedding begins, all is not as it should be at the number one ladies detective agency. 
In anticipated of a long awaited celebration, upsets and obstacles will be to be expected, but not perhaps but not perhaps in such numbers. While investigating unpleasant occurrences on a southern cattle post, Mama Ram Ramaswit Ramotswi, always on the side of the weak against the strong, has reasons to reflect on rule number three of the principles of private detection. Never lie to the client. Apprentice mechanic Charlie seems to be avoiding his responsibilities with regard to prudence Ramkwani's twin babies and as Mama Mutkutsky's big day approaches, her nemesis Violet Sepho is, Sepho is casting her net wider. Tongue twisters. <laughs> No longer merely the enemy of wise to be, now that she is standing for elec election, the Matahari of the Botswana Secretarial College could spell trouble for the entire nation. Then sightings of the ghost of Mama Ratuski's beloved tiny white van are unsettling to say the least. But as friends and family guy gather under a starry African night skies, it turns out that even the most perplexing of apparitions and the most shocking of crimes may yield a rational explanation. And of course to Mama Ramadovsky's inimitable way with love, intuition and red bush tea. I do apologise for the butchering of all those names but it does sound like a really good read. Also picked up from Tesco, another book published in 2011 in the remarkably condition, in fact I'm pretty sure this probably came from the same person's collection, is Susan Hill's The Betrayal of Trust. Susan Hill of course wrote The Woman in Black which is I've seen in London. I actually saw it at the Fortune Theatre. I've actually worked at the Fortune Theatre, but that's another story. So uh, this one basically says Simon Sorelia is faced with that most complicated of investigations, a cold case. Freak weather and flash floods all over southern England. Half of Lafferton is afloat, a landslip on the moor has closed the bypass and as the rain slowly drains away a shallow grave and a skeleton are exposed. It doesn't take long to identify the remains of those of the missing teenager Harriet Lowther, last in carrying a tennis racket while waiting for a bus, but that was 16 years ago. How long will it take to trawl through the old stale evidence and assess it anew? The Lafferton force is struggling with staff shortages and economics and Simon has to do a lot of the legwork on his own. Meanwhile his sister Dr Kat Dearborn is fighting for extra funding for the hospice which is threatened with cuts and closures. As all the saline all the Simon Sorella novels offer more than merely a murder mystery and betrayal of trust is no exception. It takes a brave, truthful look at old age and the associated problems of terminal illness which in the future will bring our society to the brink of painful conflicts of conscience. Susan Hill's gifts are displayed here to dazzling effect. Her empathy and understanding of the human heart, her brilliance when evoking character and her tremendous powers of exciting storytelling. So wow, that does sound like my kind of book. You know, I'm lots of booktube say they're super excited. They're always right up their alley. This is all of those things. This is the kind of book I live for. The next and um, final three books who came in my subscription boxes. Um, I did get, I do get every month I get a book and a brew. And this month's book, I used to do the unboxings, but I'm too excited with the bo boxes that I want to see what's in them. I just don't do it anymore. I'm sorry, I might start. If you want to see me do um, book and a brew unboxings again, let me know in the comments below and I will start filming me opening them. But I get too excited and dying to see what the book is. And this one uh, in March was Claire McIntosh's I See You. I love the cover. I love the raised bits. Um, you do the same thing every day. You know exactly where you're going. You're not alone. When Zoe Walker sees her photo in the classified section of a London newspaper, she's determined to find out why it's there. There's no explanation. Just a grainy image, a website address and a phone number. She takes it home to her family who are convinced it's just someone who looks like Zoe. But the next day the advert shows a photo of a different woman and another the day after that. Is it a mistake, a coincidence or is someone keeping track of every move they make? Now I remember hearing about this when it came out last year, it only came out last year, and I thought it sounded really interesting. I'm glad I didn't pick it up now because of course it's in my book in the brew. Obviously at some point I may get a duplicate book in my book in the brew or something I've already read, so if I do I can give that away to you guys. The last two books were in the Illumicrate um, of, uh, it was February but it came in March because it was a bit late. I have done a full unboxing you'll find the link down below. It's the last Illuma Crate that I have subscribed to for the time being because I do find it's a very expensive box um, and it's hit and miss with the extras. The books have always been fantastic. I will say that 
but the extras are hit and miss. This was actually the best one for me. I really liked all the stuff that came in it. Um, and we got two books. So the first book we got was Winter Song by S.J. Jones, which of course is a reimagining or a retelling of Labyrinth, which I didn't know when I picked it up, but it is. I do love the cover. And um, yeah, we got a load of bookmarks, which is really cool. So I'm not, I'm not gonna read this because I've already done it and you can find that in the link below. Um, so yes, uh, so we got Winter Song and we also got an arc of Red Sister by Mark Lawrence. It's nice and floppy. <laughs> and it's huge. So needless to say, this comes out this month and it's not gonna be read this month because, uh, well it might be. It depends on how quickly I get through my TBR. I mean, the writing's quite big. It's not tiny font and it's, but it is 653 pages long. But I do like the sound of it. So that was the other one that was in a little crate. So those are all the books I got in March. This is another hugely long video. Um, I'm going to try not to buy so many in April, but I keep saying that every month and yeah, that doesn't happen. So I will be back with some more bookish videos or colouring videos fairly soon. I love watching your book hauls. Keep posting them. If you've read any of the books I've mentioned, again, leave your comments in below. Let me see what you think. I want to know what you think if you've read them. If you've read them or you've read some read them and then read something similar let me know let me know what I should read that I like these books that I've got here because hey you can't have enough books in your life right and I'll see you soon bye booktube